This is Openly Hostile Opinions. With your host, Casey and Jay. I can do anything I want to do for the time I want to. Now we're looking for evil guys. This episode of Openly Hostile Opinions has been brought to you by Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access provides state-of-the-art multi-layered security with advanced privacy protection using VPN tunneling. When you use Private Internet Access, not even your ISP can tell what you're doing online. Prevent throttling and other people from eavesdropping on what you do. If you want to help out Openly Hostile Opinions and get yourself this wonderful VPN package, go to ohonet.pw slash ohovpn again that is ohonet.pw slash ohovpn sign up for private internet access today Oh, man. Ar- Arlie Ermy died. Yes. Arlie Der- Ar- Ermy died this week, who's best known as the sadistic drill instructor from uh, Full Metal Jacket. Beautiful movie. Yes. Yep, she could hear us. Okay, cool. All right, that's good. Uh, we completely, completely are saddened to hear that somebody has finally given that Marine permission to die. <laughs> no. Uh, Mama Bear says, I knew it was Greg. He always messes shit up. Uh, sorry, Mama Bear. He's the only reason any of this actually works <laughs> at all. <laughs> what, what was it? Did you? Did you oh, Barbara Bush, Bush just Bush died. Bush I knew she was doing Bush. poorly. Actually, I just saw that she was doing really bad, and they said that she was on basically like in the hospital for something. She was done. She yeah. was dying. I didn't know she had officially died. Yeah. Uh, well, she was like 100. She had to have been like 100 something. She was old when she was fucking the, the first lady. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I knew she was doing pretty poorly. And uh, Harry Anderson from Night Court died, too, this week. So uh, lots of people died. Oh, Jesus. People dying, that's weird. Yeah, well, it's... Am I allowed to die? Yet? <laughs> Barbara Bush was 92, apparently. 92, that's it? I thought she was 92 when she was first lady. <laughs> Jesus she, Christ. She was old, She just man. looked like she was. Yeah, she did. <laughs> oh, Greg's gonna have fun with this. Yeah, probably. I, I hope people can hear it. That's what. That's. Yeah, I hope. I hope they. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys, Casey, you're glowing. I know. We were, yeah, try- we're trying to fuck with the cameras. Yeah, we were trying to fuck with the cameras and everything like that, but I don't know. It wasn't fucking. We. This is the best that you're getting. <laughs> yeah. Some something has has changed with the camera setup, and we don't know what it is. Jarrett touched it. I yeah. did no such thing. <laughs> it was some something when we migrated to XSplit, which makes things so much better for us as far as being able to reach more people. Uh, speaking of which, hi out there in Twitch land. Hi out there in YouTube land. Are we live on Twitch? Yes, we're live on. Watch us on Twitch? Yeah. No. You yeah. Can, you can, no one's watching right. us on Twitch. Yeah, nobody cares. It's mostly you. Periscope. Yo, um, why, why don't you? You got a bunch of Twitch friends, Casey. Why don't you go real quick? I don't have a bunch of Twitch friends. I don't want them to know what people I do. Don't really Twitch, Share it with your Twitch guild. As big as it used to be, I don't think. Oh, it, it's big. It's just like I don't. It's Facebook Live now. Like I yeah, it. like X Factor. He, he doesn't even go to Twitch anymore. He just goes to Facebook. Yeah, because Twitch has so many guidelines and everything like that. A lot of people try to not do it if they can, but like if you didn't start Twitch early, yeah. uh, it's hard to get it going on it because share, it's just so, share, share it with your guild come on man Make it nah, my guild's not the type of people for this show <laughs> i don't think they see a lot of sunlight <laughs> chelsea said casey looks like a twinkie I yeah I the, from what you told me about your guild they sound like the type of people who would enjoy everything about this show yeah maybe. stupid humor and dumbassery yeah, maybe i don't know who knows this show's fucking <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> Greg played a sound. Stepping on each other's uh, sound clips. Yeah, it's whatever. I don't know if they can hear that or not. They can. Mama Bear said they oh, can. They, oh, can. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I wanted to bring up a couple of things. So, first off, R. Kelly's uh, in trouble for fucking people he shouldn't be again. Uh, 14-year-olds? Uh, no, this one uh, this Was one there was urine 19, involved? Uh, I don't know. Although, the, the woman in question, who is currently unnamed... Uh, 
claims that he intentionally infected her with an STD. Oh, God. R. Kelly has a disease? No. <laughs> no, no way. Uh, it's claimed that Kelly uh, attempted to make her a member of the sex cult. He has a sex cult, oh, apparently. Oh, my God. Of course he does. We need, we need Dave Chappelle to come back and make fun of him again. <laughs> <laughs> That's Now, that one we've had for a yeah, while. Yeah, we actually have that on here, but I don't know where it's at. Who did he pee on now? He didn't pee on it, or maybe he did. I don't know. They didn't get into it. What the fuck is a sex cult? Uh, something R. Kelly has, apparently. Jesus Christ. He he believes he can fly no. straight into sexual allegation charges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Well, where is it? There we go. <laughs> oh, man. So, like, he is something else, man. First is, like, peeing on some underage chicks. And, of course, of course it's a, a, a typical... Uh, saying that he categorically denies all claims and allegations. Dude, everybody knows you're a fucking sexual predator. <laughs> yeah, I know. We've known it since the late 90s. I wonder if he's even still making music. Does anyone care? <laughs> well, I don't know. If he's raping... He music. Yeah, exactly. I, I just want to know what the fuck his problem is. Why isn't he in jail? Oh, probably because he has money. Yeah, that's exactly why. That, money. that Space Jam money's got him set for a long time. <laughs> Space you know? Jam. I heard they were going to remake that. What the hell ever happened with that? I think they did. It just no one cared. <laughs> no, I don't know. I really. Um, he's had it for a while. A mom said he kidnapped her kid. Yeah. Jesus. Like, why is this man not in prison? Jesus Christ. Like, what kind of fucked up world do we live in with child predators? Or, or you know, our, our neighbor that we've talked about in the past yeah. who, who lived down the road from us who walked around for a year before going to prison after being convicted of, of and the it wasn't charges. like it was so funny too because when he did it he wasn't like ashamed about it people no, wouldn't talk to him he'd go into public places people would be mad and wouldn't talk to him and he'd get pissed if people wouldn't talk to him it's like you're a fucking kid toucher what do you expect yeah, you're a sexual fucking predator what the hell do you expect you uh, piece of shit it's just fucking well, i'm gonna play this direct from the clinton <laughs> I don't I'd, really think Craig was in there for <laughs> child molestation. Hey, whatever. It has to do with jail. That's why I played it. <laughs> but fuck you, R. Kelly. Go to jail, dude. That's where you belong. He pays them off. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like, when you have enough money, you can just get away with anything. Yeah, that's like fucking Magic Johnson. Even South Park made fun of him that the cure for AIDS is you uh, pureed a bunch of money injected into yourself with a needle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he should have been died. Should have died thirty years ago. Still walking around. Yeah, I'm fucking about it. I don't know. R. Kelly's a fucking freak. I don't even know why you're still like. I don't know. Whatever. Go fuck yourself. Go die. <laughs> so one of my biggest things here. I want to move on to something else here. One of my biggest things that I fucking hate is when people say some shit that they mean and then they backpedal afterwards. Yes. So uh, you know that there was a uh, there was a uh, teacher strike uh, in Kentucky, right? And the Kentucky governor said some shit. <laughs> well, uh, the Kentucky governor said some shit. Uh, he says, and I quote, I guarantee you somewhere in Kentucky today, a child was sexually assaulted that was left at home alone because there's no one there to watch him. And uh, there, there's some other shit he said, and it said too. But, uh, you know, so he goes on, he makes this whole fucking uh ridiculous four minute speech and says his comments were misunderstood. The words that people say can have unintended consequences, he said. Many Nowadays, people yeah. many people have been confused or hurt or just misunderstood what I was trying to communicate. Uh and he went on to apologize. For those who've been hurt by the things that were said, it was not my intent. You know what? If you're gonna say some shitty shit, just just own it. Well what did he say? Does it say what he said? Well, yeah, he said that somebody was, you know, somebody got sexually assaulted and you know, uh, because the the teachers were striking, you know, because God forbid they would you know, like to be paid whoa, a living whoa, wage. Whoa, 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 whoa. So these teachers, wait, these teachers were striking, and then who got sexually molested? Nobody. Oh. The point is, he said, I guarantee you somebody got in Kentucky got sexually molested because your teacher, you know, you teachers wouldn't fucking accept our deal. <laughs> That's that's what he was getting at. Jesus Christ, man. But was... here's the thing. He obviously really feels that way or he wouldn't have said it. Yeah, exactly. So don't be a backpedaling bitch. If you're going <laughs> to say something like that, then you fucking own your crappiness. Yeah, exactly. And that's just plain and simple what it is. I, I, have, I have more respect for somebody who says something awful and owns it 
than I do somebody like this. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, you know, I'm not trying to get political here, but like Donald Trump, I don't like the guy's politics at all. uh I don't really like him as a good person either, but I have more respect for him because when he says something fucking awful, he just says, yeah, I said it. He's just like, fuck it. Deal with it. (laughs) It's like, what are you going to do to me? I'm rich. I have more respect for somebody like that than I have uh, for this this guy who like backpedals every time he says some dumb shit. Are we bombing Syria now? What's going on with that? Yeah, apparently. Are we still bombing them? Oh. (laughs) because <laughs> I don't follow the news at all or anything like that. And I was just wondering what was going on with that. If we were still bombing them or what? And I don't know. Well, I mean, it seems like every president we have now gets us into a war. Somehow we still don't fucking don't know how to stay out of bullshit, but, uh- Let's put it this way. The serious situation is way too complicated for me to explain to you in 30 seconds on this here show. Oh, okay. So you may want to look into that. But um, we got time. Whatever. <laughs> well, it's 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 going to no matter how much we get what what side we take on the issue or even if we try to be unbiased, the whole thing's going to end up being a pain in the ass. And, <laughs> and I don't want to get into it, especially since I'm the only one who's remotely informed on the issue and I'm not that informed. So I'm liable to say something stupid and then everybody's going to jump on my shit. <laughs> so, uh, well, while we're talking about teachers who are demanding more money, let's go ahead and make them look bad too. <laughs> so this was, uh, this I actually was, wanted to talk about this. This is funny as shit. Okay. Well then, then I'm glad we're getting into it. This guy here, he was not at one of the Kentucky ones who are striking, but in any event, a substitute teacher hosted a fight club at school. So the kids would like him. <laughs> what What was that? A fight club? <laughs> a fight club for children. <laughs> this is so funny, man. The fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> a jelly donut. <laughs> oh man. That was one of the best scenes in the movie where, uh, <laughs> oh, I fucking love it. It's one of the best scenes of the movie when Gomer Pyle sitting there eating eating the donut and everybody's doing push ups around him. Yeah. Fucking Vincent doesn't D'Onofrio. He, doesn't he play on some fucking like new like special victims unit or something like that show? Doesn't he play a cop in some show now or something like that? Vince D'Onofrio? Yeah. I don't know. I mean he was the kingpin and Daredevil, but No. Uh Bomb we're killing kids we don't we, we, we bomb, we're killing kids. We don't, we didn't save them, basically. Oh, nice. It's it's a fucked up situation. I mean, Mama Bear gets it right there. It's 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 a fucked up situation, and it's something I'm not I'm not touching with a 10-foot pole, <laughs> basically. It sounds confusing just in that sentence. I'm like, what? It's a damned if you do and damned if you don't situation, and no matter which solution you choose, somebody's going to be pissed at you. So it's just, uh, he was in law and order. It, yeah, yeah, he was in law and order. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, this teacher, substitute teacher, Ryan Fish, was fired last year. He, uh, let's see here. He was an extremely laid-back teacher, they said. Uh, so he was only 22. The kids Jesus are 16. Christ. That's not a very big age difference at all, Mm-mm. if you think about it. No, so uh, whatever students wanted to do, you know, Fish was quote-unquote cool with it. The, huh. the teacher was cool with it because, you know, he's basically just a kid, too. Yeah, I saw this, and it actually, there's a bunch of videos of it. He would he was a substitute teacher, and he had a fight club for mm. his students every time he saw And there was, like, real fist fights and shit. It wasn't like, eh, like... No, he made him do open hand, but still. Yeah, but still, like, if you watch some of the videos, they're, like, really fucking hitting each other. Like, oh, yeah, hard. like, some of the videos, like, one kid got his ass kicked, and he starts puking in the trash can and shit yeah. like that. <laughs> But uh, you know, he he let he claims he was battling bullying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that was that, that was his way of letting people get their aggressions out. See, see, and here's the thing: what we were just talking about. If you're gonna if you're gonna do something, stick behind it. Don't fucking try to. Oh, I was battle bullying. Whatever. Yeah, it's exactly what I was just saying. Don't be a backpedaling little bitch. <laughs> God, at least own it, man. If I did something like that, I'd be like, bitch, I'm going to be famous. Well, he did. He says, I'm just trying to be the teacher that kids could come to and actually express themselves and actually work through their issues. Uh, Kind of have a social thing. Take a look at this guy, though. Too bad we can't throw him on the picture. Talk about child molesters. Holy shit, man. He looks like one. Yeah, too bad we can't show you the picture. He sort of looks like me, don't you think? (laughs) He has more hair than you. Yeah, that's true. Everybody has more hair than me. But, yeah, he was arrested on Thursday for multiple charges of reckless endangerment and risk of injuries to a child. Oh, man. But that, and that's the thing. And, and the funny thing is that all these people are like, oh, how could we prevent this? How could we prevent You can't prevent something like this from happening. Like, you can't. There's no psycholo- psychological evaluation that's going to be like, you know what? We, we shouldn't let this guy be a teacher because he's going to have a fucking... 
That's like when I remember a train crashed in Philadelphia years and years ago, and everyone's like, what caused this? What happened? That This train, it fucking broke. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus, why do we always got to feel like we have to prevent everything? Some things aren't preventable, and this wasn't preventable. <laughs> My wife says, uh, well, you have more hair than Greg. Yes. <laughs> uh, everybody has more hair than Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find out if they can hear that or not? Yes. Oh, Mama Bear said oh, okay. I hope awesome. they can. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, there's some videos where he sits there looking at some paperwork at his desk while 15 and 16-year-olds like slap each other. But eventually he ends up s- sort of like refereeing them. What? How could you sit there and be watching something else while there's a fight going on in front of you. You're like sitting there. Hmm. We're going to go ahead and shuffle through our papers yeah. here. Oh, hmm. We're bombing Syria. Oh. <laughs> oh, look, you're bleeding. You should probably see the nurse. About oh, that. man, I don't get that, man. If there's a fight going on, I'm watching the fight. I, hell, I'll be getting my phone out yelling World Star. <laughs> <laughs> That's his war cry. <laughs> Show me your war face. Yeah. Needs work. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, so anyway, the, the, the report describes then, then fish moves, uh, moves back while thrusting his hands down, gets behind his desk while smiling and laughing. He watches as one boy charges the other only to stop short at the last second. Police later interviewed one of the combatants, 16, who said in another fight, he gave his opponent a bloody lip. Fish paused the fight to make sure the bleeding student was all right. And then they resumed the match. What is yeah. going on with this guy? You can tell by that picture. He looks fucking stoned out of his mind. Oh, my mind. God, yeah. <laughs> and they said in uh, many of the fights that the police watched on the video, they said that the, one of the boys was significantly smaller than the other. Well, that's the way it should be, in my opinion. That's why I don't really like UFC these days because there's weight classes and shit. I liked it back in the day when there was no weight classes. It was, hey, my fighting style is better than yours. And that's there was like 350-pound dudes going up against 185-pound guys. My favorite my favorite fighter ever was Tank Abbott. If you... He was good. Mine was Royce Gracie. Royce Gracie, he was... 135 pound fucking you know soaking wet Brazilian and he used to kick everyone's ass. Well, Tank Abbott was a big biker looking guy who fought in jeans and his fighting style was uh, street fighting. Yeah, it was street fighting, and that's the thing. You would um, uh, Royce Gracie's was Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I think, mm-hmm. uh, and he would just put people in these crazy submissions and it didn't matter how big you were, he was gonna break your arm. And I remember he used to do this thing where he used to. Uh, he used to put his legs around your back and then take his heels and fucking keep uh, kicking you in the kidneys. And it was just like, that makes you, that would make you fucking bleed blood afterwards. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember Tank Abbott, though. He uh, he was really, really good. I remember him punching, a, get, doing a lot of quick knockouts and everything like that. But, yeah, I like UFC back in the day. UFC's okay now. I, I sort of like watching the women fight because women fighting are funny to me. Because <laughs> they have that whole, like, oh, man could do it. Whoa, whatever. Jay, yeah. I'm out of motherfucking Jack Fire help. I have some in my fridge right now, actually. <laughs> Don't tell her that. <laughs> She's had enough. <laughs> <laughs> man, I turned so many people on to that shit. I'll tell you what, man. I forget where the I... The problem is it has so much fucking sugar oh, in it. Oh, yeah, I know. There's a tablespoon and a half per shot. Holy shit. Dude, it's ridiculous. That... <laughs> That's a lot, dude. I didn't realize that. Holy dude, fuck. if you ever spill some of it, it actually gets like it, it's sticky. It's like syrupy. Yeah, I go to MMA fights occasionally. It's fun. Yeah, uh, our friend Hammer, he's been on the show. He says he had a blast when he went. Holy, Holy shit. shit! It's Trevor. Trevor's here. What's up, man? Where have you been, dude? We haven't seen you in a while. Felt like it's been forever. How you doing, man? Made, uh, made us sad. Yeah, made us sad. Yeah, we we we, we missed you. Uh, that's fine. Don't yeah. <laughs> that alcohol is Megan's. I won't. I won't. Be, yeah, I like you care, man. Megan, you 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 like giving stuff to people. She just made me dinner actually today. She made me chicken Alfredo, and it was fucking good. But boy, does my stomach hurt because I'm lactose intolerant. <sighs> like after the show, I'm like I have to poop so bad. It's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that before I got here. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> my uh, wife's like, "Yo, bitch, <laughs> Tuffy." What's up? Yeah, what's up, Trevor? Man, we haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? How you doing? Sorry, I wanted to play that for some reason. <laughs> you know, I decided to party with my my wife a little bit this weekend, you know. How'd and, that uh, go? Uh, well, she was drinking Jack Fire. I went to my old college standby. Vladimir Vodka. Oh, God, that stuff is oh, horrible. Uh, oh, I... <laughs> I remember Joe, our friend Joe, used to drink that shit all the time, and he used to fucking get smashed. And I remember one time we had to carry him in from outside, and I hit his head on the steps. It was so, but he didn't wake up. 
<laughs> okay then. <laughs> uh, the uh, my wife says Megan doesn't like me, so I won't take her fire. What? What is this? Megan that likes mean? you. Yeah, what is that? Megan likes everyone. She needs all the friends she can get. Uh, nope, you haven't. Uh, oh my god, I have to go with you sometime. Uh, oh, that's the UFC fights. It, it, like I said, I Ham, ha, see Hammer said it, he went to one. He said it was a blast. He was just all drunk. And he was yelling, finish him. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably what I would be doing the whole time. Megan says I give most things away, but when it comes to alcohol, I'm greedy. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, what, what, are you, what are you giving away yeah, there, Megan? Yeah, what are you giving away? Way to make your sound, uh, stuff your sound out like a whore. <laughs> Greg looking sexy as fuck. There's Trevor. There's Trevor being Trevor, uh, hitting on bad. Greg like usual. Fuck you, Casey. Maybe later. Uh, yeah. So okay. Now there's apologies going in the chat. I think uh, Amanda was just being a shit. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of alcohol, it made me think of this for some reason. I did want to bring something up. Did you hear about these cops in uh, Argentina? Uh, basically, they found a stash of like a ton of marijuana, and it all of a sudden became missing, and they blamed it on mice eating it. <laughs> <laughs> they blamed a ton of marijuana missing on mice missing it. They got fired, but I'm just saying I think that's uh that's one of the what we're we talking about excuses and everything. That's probably the lamest excuse I ever heard. <laughs> you could find those rats they'd probably be dead if you ate that much. Seriously, I love everyone. That's good. Yeah, your wife's drunk. <laughs> well, she's like the, she really does. She likes everybody until they give her a reason not to. Yeah, that's the way I am. I give everyone a chance, but I don't know. Whatever. Not with friends. None with friends. No new friends. No. She's kidding. Jesus Christ. You people. I don't know. I don't know what she's capable of. She could be poisoning me slowly. I think that's why she likes cooking for me so much. She could be trying to slowly poison me, like little by little. Oh, Cody's watching. What's up, man? <laughs> Cody, how you doing, man? Calling you out. I see that you just joined Facebook. That's why I said that. Cody who? <laughs> Uh, our oh, friend buddy. Cody. Oh, he okay. used to play World of Warcraft with us. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Like us. Yeah. How about it? Well, hello, Cody. I don't know you, but how is it going? <laughs> so, um, yeah, here's another another news story. I don't want to get into too much about it because I don't care, but Will Ferrell was involved in a car crash. Unfortunately, he didn't die. Why do you hate Will Ferrell so because much? Because he's not funny. <laughs> Will Ferrell is not funny. Nothing he does is funny. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're working funny. at soundboard something hilarious. good there. This is awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. Who do you get? Was it by himself or who was it with? I don't know. All I saw, he was involved in a car accident. I looked and I saw that he wasn't seriously injured. I'm like, damn it. Yeah, I I just watched um, Daddy's Home the other day. It was pretty funny. Um, I want to see the second one because the second one has Mel Gibson in it. <laughs> Megan says I am poisoning you. You weren't supposed to live this long. Yeah, exactly. He was a good elf. Uh, okay, and I I don't mind elf, but I like the movie despite Will Ferrell. Like, I think he's just awful. He's a terrible actor. You anyway, who's... What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know. He's he fucking just, terrible. He hates Will Ferrell. I it's, do. And some of his stuff, I don't think he's that funny, but in other things, I think he's fucking hilarious. He plays the yeah. same fucking character in everything. He's, he's just an annoying hilarious. man-child. Ugh, uh, fuck him. Yeah, you didn't know that. Yeah, we've talked about this on other shows, like, previously, that just... Jay, I can't stand him. Yeah, Jay Hay, can't Jay hates stand him. So he's not dead, so Jay's upset. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping... You're a terrible actor. I'm not trying to act. No. Nah. I, I mean, I might be a little bit more extreme on this show than I would be in real life, but I'm not trying to, like, act, act. No. Nah. Anyway. Um, yeah, does it say if he was with anyone else or not? Yeah, well, he, he hit somebody. No, really. He's uh, 50? Yeah, he was in a pass passenger in an SUV that overturned, so he wasn't even driving. Oh, okay. Farrell and three other people in the car were taken to the hospital. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Mama Bear oh, says his videos with the baby. Are you talking about the one? Because I know there's this one where it's uh, not from a movie or anything, but he has this video on the internet of where uh, there's a knock on his door and he goes to answer it and there's like this little kid standing there and he says it's his landlord and she's like bitching at him for his money, uh, for his rent money. I thought that was pretty funny, but I can't remember what it was from or why he did it. I think it was just some promotional thing. Okay, well, I'm going out. Peace. Pearl the landlord. Yeah, that's it. You better not go anywhere. Uh, go out anywhere. The kids yeah. are home. Don't 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 be drinking and driving sauce. with Pearl. Yeah, I think the her big name. One can watch the little one. We, this was in a movie. We've seen this. <laughs> what movie was it? Jane Silent Bob. Yeah. Oh yeah, Jane Silent Bob. And another movie I like, despite him. <laughs> oh wait, Will Ferrell was a Jane Silent Bob. Wait, yes. I'm, what, what? he was the cop. 
Oh, I don't remember that part. I haven't seen that movie in fucking years, so I don't remember. I just remember uh, that's when the internet first came out. So, uh, like, if you think about it, that movie's sort of ahead of its time because Jay and Silent Bob wanted to do or did what everybody wants to do sometimes on the internet. You just want to beat the fuck out of them. Like, at the end where they find all those people Mm -hmm. that talk shit about their message board. (laughs) Yeah. 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 That's fucking fucked up. But uh, I actually will watch the kids. He said, "Yeah, that that I'm pretty <laughs> sure that would end up. He'll end up bad. Sub- opening another portal dimension or something like that." <laughs> oh yeah, he was a federal wildlife inspector. That's it. Okay, I do remember that. He's the one that finds him at the diner or whatever like that. Um, yeah, he's chasing him through the whole time because they stole the monkey. Yeah, that's it. Or the yeah, ape or whatever. He was in that movie. What's that? Yeah, I didn't know he was in that movie. I just remembered it. But the funny thing is, is like he hasn't aged at all. He like he's fifty. He still looks the same he did like fucking twenty years ago. Um, I'm not sure, but the baby was like I think it was. I think her name was Pearl, and it was his landlord. And yeah. like it was, she was like threatening to beat him up over the rent money or something like <laughs> that. Oh my god, uh, Tuffy is not babysitting our children. You two need to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> uh so I did want to talk about some. We've mentioned robot sex dolls. Um. A lot on the show. We've always talked about it. Hell, like probably in our first 10 episodes, we've talked about it. Well, it's actually becoming therapy for married couples, I guess. Um, It says robot sex doll inventor claims it has proven his marriage. Improved. Improved, yeah. What'd I say? Proven. Proven. (laughs) Um, So this guy and his wife were having uh, problems or whatever like that. They weren't doing well. So... uh, he got a sex robot, and it's been helping. Um, he says... How if, so? Like, Well, he says, want to keep the passion in a relationship? Try adding a sex robot doll. Um, that's the recommendation of Spanish Spanish inventor Sergi Santos? Sergi? Sergi. Sergi, who created a sex doll equipment with the latest advancement in artificial intelligence. Samantha. He calls it Samantha. Um, is designed to respond. Oh, that's my daughter's name. That creeps me out. Oh, yeah, is it? <laughs> uh, creeps me out. Oh, man. Um, and it says this is how it's it's helped. A man wants to feel in general that the woman is desperate to have sex with him. What? Uh, I don't want women to feel like they're desperate. Exactly. <laughs> that sounds a little stalkery. Yeah. A man wants to feel in general... That the woman is desperate to have sex. What? Yeah, I don't get that. What kind of shit is that? No wonder you were having marriage problems. And if a man feels like a woman will not enjoy sex fully, most men do not like sex. Okay, this guy guy has problems. (laughs) No, no, no. I get that part of my... You know... (laughs) <laughs> and this is the cause of many sexual problems. No, I, I mean, I get that point. If, like, it feels like the woman's not into it, I, I'm not, you know, it's still better than not having sex, but still, it's, like, it's disappointing. Yeah, it's true, but it's, like, I don't go to the far where, it's like, if if a girl doesn't want, like, is it, didn't, like, how do I put this? A girl, every time you have sex with a woman, she's not going to enjoy it every time. Just get used to it. That's just the way it is. <laughs> yeah, but, you, I don't know. Women get multiple orgasms. I think you should just, you know, get a ball gag and some rope <laughs> and shit, and then then you'll be good to go. That's, yeah, and spice up the spice up the, the the experience a little bit. Um, and so that's what he said. He says, and this is the cause of many sexual problems. And his wife says, "I need sex sometimes." Of the, you can tell English isn't their first language. I need sex sometimes of the day that my wife doesn't want to. And I said, "Look, sex is breaking already many relationships because of lack of synchronism." And that would not put pressure to my marriage. So basically, how I see it was helping is that she didn't always want to have sex. He did. So he would just fuck the robot. You know, I have another solution for that. It's been around for thousands of years. It's called smacking your pud. <laughs> it ain't that hard to hey, do. Man, so, just sometimes people need a little TLC. That's like a... Yeah, but you're not getting it from a robot. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. They're, they're also, just... I also read a thing where... Uh, Hackers are basically hacking robots to kill you. So <laughs> what? Yeah, uh, I apparently your sex robot can be hacked to kill you. So it's oh, exactly awesome. like a real woman. Yeah, exactly, awesome. exactly. And that's what people were joking about. They were like, "Oh, so it's like a real woman." <laughs> My husband's famous last line: "Don't let me catch you sleeping on your belly." Gets me every time. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it's uh. That's what the, that's what makes a good selling. Yeah. 
<laughs> see, uh, well, see, see, like uh, you know, if you're trying to trying to penetrate the ass, perhaps, but it kind of like puts puts the good stuff a little bit out of reach. Yeah, I I don't know what kind of like I'm. I think I most women I know have crazy sex drives, like like really crazy, worse than you know any man that I know. That's how bad it is. So. When I hear these stories about women don't want to have sex, it's weird to me because most women I do know want to have sex all the time. I mean, some women don't, sure, but uh, most of the ones that I know uh, tend to tend to be as bad as we are. Yeah, see, I I just I've never really been with a girl like and like uh, had a girlfriend like every girlfriend I seem like I have had has had way crazier sex drives than me. So I don't understand this whole women don't want to have sex because. That's just that's not what I'm used to at all, and it's fucking weird. I don't understand. I thought, and it still is like men. Men are known to be the horny guys or whatever like that, and they say that when you get married, the the sex stops and the blowjobs. No, start. it doesn't. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. The women I know, you'd probably get more of it because you spend more time together. Uh, Megan says they're liars. Maybe they are. I don't know. I do okay. Yeah, and that's the thing. Do do does women really not like sex? Or they just pretend not to. Amanda says they are liars. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't know. I, I think I think women like sex as much as we do. They just sometimes get they're they're easily turned off by us being stupid. So if we do something stupid, that's that's when the sex drive goes down. Oh, okay. I All think right. that's what it is. Is women a women's sex drives are very in tune to their how they're feeling, and if they feel like you're a fucking idiot, they do not want you to put your dick inside of them. Whereas we're like, oh, sex is always fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's the thing about women, like they, it seems like they need to be warmed up. Sometimes men are just like always. We don't need a reason. We're just like, ooh, sex. Women need reasons, I guess, because that's what like they said they did a poll where. Um, what's the number one thing your husband can do to turn you on? And and the number one answer was housework. Yeah, see, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, you do something they like, they like that. But, uh, okay, so Mama Bear says when you've been with someone 22 years, it stops and then it comes back. Okay, maybe. Uh, Tuffy says Jay has a tiny dick. Um, it's not the, it's not the size of the ship. It's the motion of the ocean, although then again, you're not getting to China on a rowboat. Uh, I think the problem is they're having bad sex. I concur. Uh or for her, his height is okay. Je- Jesus Christ, Amanda. <laughs> right on out. My wife, Mandy. Thanks, thanks, <laughs> thanks, hon. It's, ton of, it, it's a ton of kids, too. They ruin it. Yeah, yeah. Having sex with kids around sometimes is difficult. I will give you that. I'll uh, just ask R. Kelly. He does it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's having sex with the kids. Uh, All right. Hey, I, I got to stop us here, though. It's time. We got we to gotta run our mid-roll ad here. <laughs> <laughs> oh so as usual uh as you should be used to by now our sponsor is again private internet access and as you okay we have people giggling in the other room all right then so anyway private internet access an anonymous vpn service provider so You can use private internet access to protect your privacy and an identity online. Unblock censorship filters, which is really nice. Say you want to um, watch some shit on the uh, BBC network. You can actually ungeo-restrict it by going through the VPN. Not that that's the most ethical thing in the world, but you can. Uh, You can, and they have a platform that's available for Windows, for Android, for Linux. They've got everything. So. If you want to get it, you can get it for as low as $3 a month if you pay for two years ahead of time. Not a problem. If you even pay for it by a month, try it out for one month. It's only $7. You can protect your privacy online, protect the internet access from your ISP. They don't need to know that you're, you know, maybe necessarily downloading the latest blockbuster movie. So if you want to help us out and check out private internet access for yourself, it is available through our special link that will give us a kickback, ohonet.pw slash ohovpn. Again, that is ohonet.pw slash ohovpn. And now that that's out of the way, Tuffy is saying to my wife, Mandy, I will show you my 30-footer, and then I will show you my boat. Uh, <laughs> put that shit away, kid. <laughs> Nobody wants to see what? you. Nobody wants to see you playing with your dinghy. What the hell do you want to show someone's boat? For? I mean, why do you? Why? 
I don't get Nobody that. wants to see you playing with your dinghy. Lot, You're using boats as a euphemism for penis. Have, uh, <laughs> no. I think he wants to show her his penis and then his boat afterwards. On the boat. Yeah, on the boat. Uh, That's the last thing I want to do when I show a girl my penis is show my boat, but whatever. I think what he's saying is he's rich and has a big one. (laughs) I don't know. Are you rich, Trevor? Trevor? Are you you rich? (laughs) He's in high school. He can't be rich. His parents might be rich. Why not? Wait, Trevor, you're in high school? Yeah, because <laughs> no one told me about this. How did you not know that? <laughs> no, I did not know that. I did not know you were in high school, Trevor. I'm sorry. I, I feel like I'm corrupting him now. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, you need that soundboard forever. <laughs> uh, it has a lot of things that fit, actually. Uh, no, I, I did not. I don't know what these are. Oh, okay. no, that, that, that'll that come in handy. Oh, man. It's, it's, that's the funny thing. Like, even though he's dead, this stuff's still going to. Yeah, this, oh, this no. will live forever. Yeah, this will live forever. It's just you can't get past he's that. He's a fucking legend. Yeah, he's a legend. Of course he is. Um, did you say, Jay, that he wasn't even supposed to do that movie? Yeah, yeah. He was actually brought in. This is a great story. Arlie Ermey was brought in as a consultant uh, for the original actor who was supposed to play. Uh, um, I can't think of the name of the character now. Uh, oh, what, well, whatever, the drill sergeant. And... Uh, the actor did did okay, um, but Arlie Ermey just de- de- just determined I, I need to have this role. Oh, uh, it says Sergeant Hartman. Yeah, that's, yeah Hartman. That's right. Right. Yeah. Drill, 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 Sergeant Hartman. Uh, he said I have to take this role. So he did that speech, that one, the the opening speech where he ro- walks around and insults everybody. Uh-huh. He did that shit in one take, Holy no cuts. Fuck, man. Like, watch the movie. Is no cuts. It's one take, just walking around doing all that I insulting shit. I never that. I'll have to watch it. And it's absolutely, uh, absolutely true. And the women here are making me feel a lot better. Mama <laughs> Bear says nobody really wants a huge penis. We like our organs right where they are. Thank you. And Mandy says, "True, I don't want fucked in the uterus." <laughs> yeah. So all you, uh, all you guys, like I have a ten-inch penis. There, there you go. Uh, Trevor, how are you rich in high school? What happened? <laughs> he ain't rich. His parents are rich. Oh. You ain't got shit till you're old enough to earn it for yourself. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Settle down there, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never knew he was in high school. What grade are you in? <laughs> I think he's probably a senior. <laughs> I just I just feel bad that we're influencing. Like, where's your parents at, man? Do you Wait. remember what you were when you were 16, 17 years old? Oh, yeah. You I was... really think you're corrupting <laughs> him? If anything, you've improved as you've nah, gotten older. Nah, I remember probably... you stealing fucking... Megan says... Yeah, Megan's mentioned this, too, before. She says you can only feel the first four inches anyways. So, uh... Oh, shit. Yeah, there's yeah. no nerve endings after that. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so all these all these women that want big dicks and everything like that, they're full they of don't. shit. They don't. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. That's It's a visual thing. That's the one thing that a woman can get after a guy is making fun of penis sizes. And I think that's, I think why, that's they, what it, why they do it. Yeah, yeah. they just do it because it, they think it hurts us for some reason. It really doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. I cry a little bit. Less. No, I really don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't give a fuck either. Say a girl's I got, like... I got any. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or as uh, Hammer always used to say, my my personal favorite, it's it's three inch, it's one inch long but three inches wide. He used to call it the tuna can. Yeah, <laughs> he says it may not hit the bottom, but it'll bust out the sides. <laughs> <laughs> we have got to get Hammer in here. I'll though. talk really to him. Do. I think I'm hanging out with him tomorrow. I'm not sure yet. All right, cool. Get him in here. We'll we'll just turn up the gain on one of the mics and have him hang out here, and we'll share a mic. Not a big deal. I'm 18. And I make about five mil a week. Okay. <laughs> right. T- right. Take it easy there, Chief. <laughs> All right, that's, so that's good. You're 18, though. I, I don't fucking i uh, I don't feel so bad now. We we got a we got a new guy working with us at work right now too. Yeah. He's 18. We all call him Junior. <laughs> he just that's when you know you became old when you start calling kids Junior. Hey, Junior. Yeah, here's the problem though. He's he's like one of the supervisor's kids, so he can't really. Oh, we, we don't we don't bust on him hard, but we all call him Junior because he's the youngest one there. No. It's kind of funny. But anyway, so you guys want to talk about some games? Sure. I like talking about some games. First off, uh, the, the the greatest thing ever, Billy Mitchell's records were stripped away from him because Billy Mitchell is a fucking douchebag, and I'm glad. <laughs> Billy Mitchell, for those of you who are unaware, uh, is is was the record holder for uh, Donkey Kong, and he was also the record holder for a perfect game of Pac-Man. But it was found... 
that he set the record at least for Donkey Kong while using an emulator instead of actually playing on an arcade cabinet uh, like he should have been. Uh, so the guy, if you've ever seen the movie, there's actually a 2007 documentary, The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters. I've seen it. It's great. And Billy Mitchell's actually the antagonist of the movie, so to speak. So um, so the guy who should be the rightful heir, now his, his records have been surpassed uh-huh. since then, but the guy who should have held the title for the last however many years is Steve Wiebe. And he uh, what a last name Weeby. I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't remember from the movie, but he was the one who was, uh, you know, eleven years ago. It turned the movie came out, you know, and it's just Billy Mitchell was kind of a dick. So it's good to see it's taken away for him. God, when I think of two thousand and seven, I do not think of eleven years ago. Yeah, well, it does. Jesus Christ! Right? What were we doing in oh seven? I don't don't fucking know. Probably playing WoW. Yeah. Uh, Weeby says, uh, the more I thought about it from the King of Kong days, it all started to make sense now. All the things that were happening at the time, like why he didn't come out and play me, and why he was inciting whose records were going to be authenticated and whose were going to be dropped. King of Kong referenced that he was a referee on the board of directors. When that leaked out, it started to make more sense. So, I mean, he's really a fucking jackass. Yeah. But, you know, it's been past. Like, uh, Weeby would not be the, the reigning king of Kong anymore because uh, Robbie Lakeman this past February scored 1,247,700 points. So he's, uh, he's the first player ever to score 1 million points. In, so uh, he, he played the thing on an emulator and they did count it at first. They didn't know. Oh, yeah, they, they, didn't know. they didn't know. That's bullshit. Yeah. Don't cheat, dude. You, you have to. And that's well, the whole cool thing about, <laughs> um, Bill, Billy hasn't come out and made a statement yet either probably yeah. because he's too fucking embarrassed as well as he should be yeah. uh, and I have one more game related thing for those of you who don't know by the way I also occasionally do a retro game stream yes. uh, I'm going to do it this weekend yeah. again and uh, I'm going to do Earthbound by popular demand I had a little <laughs> conversation on, on Facebook about it I wasn't going to do it but um, I'm going to start doing Earthbound it'll probably be played in separate pieces because it's a really long game but probably saturday night i'll probably do that so if you guys are awake at like an ungodly hour and want to catch it live like 4 30 because that's when i'm awake you know i work third shift and you're you're also awake at 9 p.m yeah but i have things to do at that point that's family time that's family time (laughs) that's when me and the wife have time to actually you know hang out with each other i wasn't gonna say that but yes that's one time we have time to do that Anyway, uh, so the next story is an NES cartridges were found full of drugs by a game collector. Drugs. Yeah, I thought that would get you excited. So he had, uh, let's see here, Julian Turner picked up a couple of retro games because that is quite the collection thing that people do now. Yeah, from 9 to 3 a.m. Yeah, I generally, we generally go at it pretty good on the weekends. But anyway. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I told you I do okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, he came up with two two carts that he uh, picked up on his uh, little collection thing, uh, roller games and golf, and they both had, I believe, cocaine. What? Let's see here. Was the cocaine old or anything like that? Oh yeah, they believe it's from when they were new games. Oh, they were heavier that they were fifty percent heavier than they should have been. So you yeah. know, you pick it up, you felt it. Oh, yeah. So he screwed the screwed the backs of the cartridges to see what was going on. And uh four plastic bags full of drugs. Oh nice. I wonder- uh, no, okay, they didn't say what drugs they were, but I, I there's actually a picture of it. Um they're they're like little bricks and they're sealed in like Foil, like foil plastic. So I'm guessing it's either heroin, cocaine, or cocaine. Yeah, probably. Like it's not pot. It was the '90s, so probably heroin. Yeah, probably was heroin. Actually, <laughs> good shit too. But uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, he found another one, I believe, that was full of money. Or no, that money. let's see here. Interesting. Turner turned the internet. Okay, so apparently before him, it wasn't him. It was uh, another yeah. copy of golf. Actually, uh, it was stuffed with five thousand dollars bills dating back to the '80s. So they believe that the the police are starting to put together that they had some sort of drug smuggling ring. Yeah, <laughs> Mama Bear, that's fucking hilarious. Mama Bear. <laughs> she says that takes blowing into the cartridge or a whole new novel. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Blowing into the cartridge, <laughs> they found blow in the cartridges. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. 
<laughs> anyway, so they're thinking that there was a drug ring who was smuggling, but you know, it happened in the eighties when these games were new. So that's that's what it was. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, you can tell those are old hundred dollar bills right there. And I love this from the actual uh, from the actual article, which came from comicbook.com. I gotta quote this because it's fucking brilliant. As they say, golf for the NES didn't choose the life of hustle; the life of hustle chose it. Jesus Christ! <laughs> that actually reminds me of talking about video games. You know, I think we were talking about this last week. How uh, they're making a rampage movie with the Rock in it. Do you remember? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's um, actually doing really yeah, well. It got a 60% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's the best ever a video game has movie has done. So it must be good somehow. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know. I hate the- to say it. I hate to say it, but I love The Rock. I know. I used to think he was fucking god awful. Like back when The Scorpion King well, came out, be, yeah. it was yeah, cringy as shit. But now he's like in everything. Like he's good. I, he actually is a good, legitimate action star now. I know, and it just took some time, I guess. But I just that's funny that the, the one vid, the the best video game um, uh, movie is Rampage. Rampage that doesn't even <laughs> like, have a story. That doesn't have a story <laughs> at all, basically. So it, I I was excited to see it already, but now I'm like even more excited. If it got a sixty percent of Rotten Tomatoes, because Rotten Tomatoes isn't easy to impress. Like if they don't like something, they'll fucking ruin you. Okay, so Mandy says I love The Rock in more ways than one. I know you're trying to be sexual with that, but I'm gonna just tell you since you're drunk and haven't realized it, it sounds like you're smoking a crack. It says she's moving on to the Crown Apple. Yeah. <laughs> um, Never smoke crack, Jay. No. Why not? <laughs> I've only ever smoked pot a few times. You know what? It doesn't even do anything for me. I get tired and hungry. Yeah, that's I'm already that's tired and hungry. I don't need help wanna, with that. If you really want to lose some weight. <laughs> yeah. You know, and teeth and no. the self-respect. And get hepatitis C. And- <laughs> yeah, and the respect of my peers. And, yeah, no. Are, did, you, did you get rid of your hepatitis yet? No. No, okay. No. Yeah, don't touch me. Now you're ready. Don't touch me. You, you fucking, fucking jackass. Did you get rid of your hepatitis? Yeah. <laughs> you know don't... what? I walked down the store, got tired of it, put it up for sale. Some guy picked it up off of Craigslist. Damn right. The fuck are you talking Damn right. About? Oh, man. That fuck right. That right. I go back for fucking more blood work again. Fuck respect, Jesus Mandy Christ. says. Uh, if we keep divulging how often and how long we have sex, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, it'll, we'll get some fuck respect. No, nah, how about <laughs> it? Megan, Megan says she has don't some crack. Lie. She's lying. Yeah, she is. She, don't have any. she has some crack. It's just in her pants. Oh. <laughs> the uh, muscle guys just don't do it for me. I'm lame. Uh, I actually know a lot of women like that. They don't like the muscles. Uh, they like the dad bods. <laughs> you you're all set. Nah, I know. Casey is the ultimate dad bod. I've got the obese bod. <laughs> the obese bod. Ta- <laughs> Casey's uh, Casey's just doughy. I'd yeah, like to call it. I am doughy actually. Do you do you remember that uh, cologne called uh, bod? Yeah. Do you oh. remember that? Yeah. I want your bod. That was like in these old neon bottles or whatever like that. I thought they were funny. Dude, I, I like want your bod. Too. Dad bod. Yeah. They they should update that cologne now. Dad bod. It smells like <laughs> smells like bad jokes and regret. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah but uh, yeah, it was a good show. We're about out of time, I think. We got like seven, no, we got like seven minutes. Settle yeah. down. Oh, that's all right. Settle the fuck down. We We're, our show's it. getting shorter and shorter. Besides, I got plenty more shit to talk about. Oh, okay, let's go then. Uh, let's see here. Uh, first off, as much as I, I have thought for a long time, time that Neil deGrasse Tyson was really cool, he needs to learn to shut his fucking uh, Yeah, he said, some, he said something He's lately. bitching about... Let, let, let me uh, go ahead and pull this up. He's bitching on Twitter about people using the word awesome. So uh, The things to fucking get upset about. I know. It's, 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 it's bad. In my, he says... He tweeted on, on the 13th, in my day the word awesome was reserved for things like curing polio and walking on the mood, not for food or TV shows. Settle down. Awesome was created by skaters. In the, like. he, he said something like... And, and there, here's the thing. Like... Religion is a weird thing. I I feel like you're allowed to have one and stuff. Just don't, you know, be crazy with it. And he was, like, hating on, like, Christians one time. And I was just like, dude, like, shut the fuck up. Like, why can't people, like, pray to an invisible God if they want to? Yeah, it's like, just because you don't pray to to the same invisible man I do. Yeah, and he was, like, getting really weird about it. I used to like him because, you know, he's actually really intelligent to listen to. But, like, stuff like this and, and with the religion, I just... Oh, he has up. a serious hard on for the moon too. By the way, this is not <laughs> this is not an isolated event. So this one happened on the thirteenth, and then April sixth of two thousand fifteen. He goes, the word "awesome" once described things like moon landings and cures for diseases. Today, it's an unexpected feature in an app. And then on October fifth of two thousand fifteen, 
He has hashtag when I was your age. We cured diseases and went to the moon, benchmarking our usage of the word awesome. Yeah, okay. You got a hard on for the moon and curing diseases. We got it. And and us misusing, in your opinion, the word awesome is really, dude, s- settle down. Like, I used to have the utmost respect for the guy. I thought he was yeah. funny. But, you know, it's like, okay, go go yeah. away. And remember what Stop. I said, I think, like two weeks ago, how uh, we are so pampered and have it so good. We just find stupid shit to bitch about. This is it. This is, this is a good definition of... You have nothing else better to do with your time because you have it so good that you're bishing about people using the word awesome. Like, holy fuck. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a silver lining to this story, though. After he posted on Twitter, Miriam Webster's Twitter account uh-huh. just put Neil, period. As in, Neil, really? <laughs> and, and that's the thing. Like, <laughs> when you got time to bitch about the fucking word awesome, dude, like... And, and that's the thing, how he says about, oh, my generation, we cured diseases, we landed on the moon and stuff like that. How about you do something like that instead of bitching about how people are you doing? Yeah, you're the one who told us Pluto's not a plant anymore. Well, fuck you! <laughs> like, <laughs> he, he's sort of contradicting himself. He's saying about how people, uh, you know, really don't do anything anymore. Well, you're not really doing anything either. You're bitching about people using the word awesome. Like, get a fucking life, you freak. All right, I think we got time for one more story. Do you want the kind of sad, crazy one, or do you want the funny one? I think we should go funny. Yeah, let's go funny. Let's go funny. Fuck it. So, a drunk tourist accidentally climbs a mountain trying to get to his hotel. (laughs) (laughs) Did he set any records? No, no. But uh, he's an Estonian tourist known, known as Pavel. He was enjoying a few drinks. I'm going to butcher all these names, so if any of you know, know this shit, I apologize. But he's been enjoying a few drinks at Servinia, a resort in Italy's Val d'Asta, and decided to call it a night and went back to his hotel. However, it seemed that Pavel uh, may have had a bit too much to drink because as he uh, set off for a short walk back to his hotel room, uh, he ended up climbing a fucking mountain. He took a wrong turn somewhere and was literally headed up a mountainside until it was too late. So he just fucking climbed a mountain. Yeah, so by the time 2 a.m. rolled around, Pavel was still climbing. He realized he made a mistake. But uh, through sheer luck, he stumbled across a closed restaurant and bar somewhere on this mountain, right? Uh-huh. And the bar was named Igloo, because of course it fucking was. <laughs> <laughs> it was nestled on the mountainside at an altitude of uh, 2,400 meters. So it was fucking up there, no, you know? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, as he realized that if he didn't fucking figure something out, he was going to die, yeah. he broke in and bunkered down for the night. Uh, so they found him in the morning on a bed made of uh, a bench and a few cushions. Uh, <laughs> being responsible, though, Pavel drank two bottles of water so he wouldn't have a hangover. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So you accidentally climb a mountain, but you remember to drink water. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they're going to fine him for his drunken escapade, but they're not going to throw him in jail, thankfully. Well, they're going to fine him for what? Breaking in? Breaking breaking and entering, yeah, he and stealing the water. He would have died. Well, I think it was more the fact he shouldn't have drank so fucking much that that happened. Yeah. I guess in the first right. place, like... I guess you just can't have fun anymore. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> All right, hell, I guess we got time for this one, too. So a gay rights lawyer burns himself to death. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so so a well-known gay rights lawyer environmental advocate has burned himself to death in a grisly protest against ecological destruction. <laughs> so uh, police say the, the charred remains of 60-year-old David Buckle were found on early Saturday in Brooklyn's Prospect Park. Um, he added that he, ho- or he left a suicide note saying he used fossil fuel to burn himself as a metaphor for the destruction of the planet. He added that he hoped his death was honorable and might serve others. That is the definition of insanity. Like, do you really think that anybody is going to fucking change their ways because you decided to immolate yourself in the middle of a park? Like, Jesus really? Christ. I think that's one less crazy person in the world is yeah. what happened there. Yeah, that's like all these fucking people protesting, like, vegan bullshit like we were talking about. Like, just off yourself. We're sick of it. It's like, I understand you have environmental concerns. Great. Try to get a job. Uh, you know, try to try to do something with your life. Yeah. Try try to do something about it. Uh, yeah, that, uh, Mama Bear says, that was so stupid, and kids ba- pass by his body on the way to a field trip. I did not know that. Are you serious? Jesus Christ. So these fucking children were traumatized because of uh, this. Yeah, real honorable death there, you dumbass. <laughs> 
See, people don't think about that stuff. They're just like, oh, I'm going to be like, internet famous. Like he had he had a lifetime of respectful work trying to, you know, improve the rights of other people. Man. And then he goes and does some stupid shit like this. He's not going to be remembered as the guy who who fought for equal rights for people. He's going to be remembered as the jackass who set himself on fire in the middle of Prospect Park. Yeah, and like I, I don't get like what 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 rights do gay people don't like? Well, this is, I mean, he was fighting back back in the day when they didn't have as much as they do nowadays. Oh, I was going to say, like, like, what don't they have now? Like, what else do you fucking want? Jesus. Like, no, this is back in the day when, when there was still be married, horrible so things happening. You're miserable to straight people. <laughs> <laughs> Such a positive outlook. I am. Well, anyway, that's our show this week, folks. Remember, uh, go to openlyhostileopinions.com. Check it out. We got a merch shop there. Uh, if you want to help support our crazy, stupid show here, uh, check it out, patreon.com slash openlyhostileopinions. Every little bit helps. We're really trying to get a radio station launched off the ground, but we need your help to do it because there's no way our dumbass people can uh, can afford $100 a month. So uh, check it out. Uh, yeah, and Mama Bear says, yes, seriously, teacher had to try to shield them from seeing it. It was like 7 a.m. when he was found. Yeah, it's it's fucked up. So, all right, guys, we'll see you all next week. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great one. Yep, see you later. Bye-bye. Later. <laughs> this has been the Openly Hostile Opinions Podcast. <laughs>